this location tonight, the Staples Center in Los Angeles. And a good Thursday evening to you. 2K Sports presents the NBA. This is Kevin Harlan along courtside with Brett Berry and Greg Anthony. We've got David Aldridge on our sideline. And we've got a chance now to get caught up on how the standings are looking in the West as we make the push through midseason. You look at the Clippers, holding on to second spot in the conference. A great season for them so far. And, of course, Sacramento. They have a lot of ground to make up. And, and when you look at the Clippers, they had plenty of doubters before the season started. But I can't imagine there's anybody out there that's taking them lightly anymore. Well, how could you? Uh, they're a team that's actually feared at this point, And that is legit. They go into every single game, no matter who's the opponent. And they expect to win. And with tip-off coming up, we've got just enough time to hear from our good friend David Aldridge on the sideline. D.A., take it away. De'Aaron Fox talked about his mentality on the court. You put the ball in his hands, he says, I'm going to take over the game. It doesn't have to be scoring, just always attacking. Always. you got to be a dog. Don't back down from anyone. Kevin, I know you're a dog. Back to you. <laughs> a little intimidation factor, D.A. Thanks. Brent, as the season goes on, and here we are about halfway through, are, are players' roles still evolving? Not the starters at this point, Kevin. They're, yeah. they're pretty much They set. are what they are. They are set in their ways, and they're set in the minutes that they're going to be playing. What the coaches are trying to find are unique combinations that might have to be on the floor because circumstances from the other team are dictating so. So which are my lineups that I can have out there that defensively I'm going to shut down great guard play? Which of the lineups do I have to have out there in order for us to have an enhanced shooting ability for a stretch of minutes? Which ones are going to speed my team up to put pressure on the opposition? I think that's where it is that coaches are trying to do a little bit of tweaking. Let's take a look at our starters for Sacramento. Back to the point with Heal to his side. They're the backcourt. Barnes and Bagley the duo with the forward. And it's Giles in at the five roaming the paint. And for the Clippers, they've got Paul George. Ivica Zubac is out there with Montrez Harrell. Then it's Patrick Bever. And it's Leonard in at the three, the small forward. And so it's the Kings getting on the board first. Six on the shot clock. Here's George. The rebound by Heel. To the left wing. The wide open look here for Fox. It's three pointers off the mark. And it's Leonard with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Los Angeles Clippers. They couldn't put the pieces together, losing the last matchup with the Lakers. Yeah, tough game on the road. The, the guys you're defending, obviously comfortable shooting in their own building. You've got to find a way to break their rhythm. Yeah, they couldn't do it in that one. Always a step slow in closing out the shooters and maybe even recognition of who was on the floor. Just not enough energy, and that's a tough way to win on the road. Now, here's Fox. Paul George unable to get his shot to go. The shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he has to continue to take. And he hits it and gets hacked on the play. A three-point possibility if he can convert the free throw. Uncovered at the rim, finding cracks in the defense here early on. Just really smart basketball and exploiting whatever holes that he's seeing right now in the defensive squad. A free throw drops for Zubox. What a culture shift it's been in Sacramento the last few years. Vlade Divac, along with Peja Stojakovic, two of the legendary Sacramento Kings players, finding their footing and trying to put their stamp on this organization with some of the young talent that they've acquired. Go, watch PG. Healed against George. Here in the first quarter with about two minutes gone by. From deep. Bagley with the rebound. And Brent around the league. Uh, people are saying the Kings are one of the scarier teams on the rise. Well, they drafted decently. They play a system that now is speaking to some of their young talent. They've had a nice blend. It's been a long time coming in Sacramento, but fans coming out to the new arena to support this new, young, hungry Kings group. 
Leonard, no luck. And he's not the guy that you want to give a wide open look from three point range. They're lucky that that one doesn't cost them. Kept alive. Giles, the pass to Begley. And the rejection by Hill. George finds Leonard. That falls. Nice speed that time from George. And for a player who didn't enter the league with breakdown ability off the dribble, guess what? Kawhi will break you down. Now about three minutes gone in the first quarter. And here is Barnes. He's coming off a 10-point game against Oklahoma City. And a great time to check out the power rankings. See how the teams are stacking up across the league. Take a look at Utah. They're stuck in the same spot, but still a top-10 team. And when you look at Los Angeles, they weren't supposed to be this effective at this point in the season. The question now is, can they sustain it? Now, here's Fox. 26 points for him last game against Oklahoma City. Felt like he had a sense in that game that the defense was being over-aggressive, and he tried to take advantage of that. He continually frustrated them throughout the night and got to the free throw line. And the shot is good. Well, Beverly showing a bit of his speed right there, out of the blocks, hoping to get something on the drive on the inside. And we're approaching about three and a half minutes played in the first quarter. Here's Fox checking some stats on him right now. He's averaging just around 22 and a half points a game. No doubt he's struggling right now from the field. Let's see if he can get it going this quarter. Now here's Beverly. It's a three-point game. And the pass to Zubats. Inside. Here's Leonard. Can't hit that one. And it's the Kings taking it the other way. Barnes outside. Paul George with the steal. Leonard attacking the rebound by Giles. Giles has got four rebounds now tonight. Fox kicks to Bagley. The 19-footer is on the money. 6'11", showing he's got a J. Marvin Bagley can be an offensive problem. Beverly, the pass to Zubats. Outside, George. He's just scored his first basket with that shot, making him one for four. And a nice job here early of establishing an inside presence. Kings leading now by three. And there's the call on Patrick Beverly. That is his first foul of the game. Giles kicks to Barnes. It's hauled in by Zubats. Zubats has got his fourth rebound in this one. Leonard attacking, and he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. Many thought the Raptors or Lakers would land Kawhi, but in the end, he came to the Clippers to write his own legacy. Returning to Southern Cal, where he grew up, was a big part of his decision. The big surprise was how Kawhi was out recruiting other stars behind the scenes to join him with the Clippers. Free throw drops for Leonard. A superstar summer, Greg, for the Los Angeles Clippers in Kawhi Leonard and in Paul George. Greg, they have two elite wings, great defenders in their prime. Give them credit, but, but also Kawhi Leonard pushing the levers behind the scenes. He, he wanted another superstar to join him in recruiting Paul George, who still had two years left on his deal in OKC. Kawhi took unprecedented control of his free agent destiny. Well, they've been striving towards it for years now, and the Kings are finally one of the premier up-tempo teams. Well, it works for them when you have a guy like De'Aaron Fox out there to blast off on any possession. You surround him with great shooters in Bogdanovich and Heald. Puts a lot of pressure on the defense on a nightly basis throughout the course of a regular season. Rebound by Harold. 
And here's Beverly. He brings it up for the Los Angeles Clippers. They trail by one. Passes it to Zubats. Outside Leonard. And Kawhi Leonard with the slam. And don't give a cerebral player like Leonard that kind of opening. He'll read that gap. Here's Joseph. Pass to Giles. Great D that time from Harold. That is some tough defense there against one of the better finishers in our game. Well, it's the golden age of point guards and Patrick Beverly trying to show that he belongs amongst them. Great awareness on that play. The Kings trail by three. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need the basket. And the effort never stops with him. No easy shots when he's on the floor. Well, it's about the defensive end, and that's what guys feed off. He gives the effort down there at all times. Timeout is called. First of the game for Sacramento. They come into this one following a loss to the Thunder. I mean, in the modern era, you have to be able to stretch the floor, or you're going to struggle. Yeah, the best way to make it hard on teams is continue your motion, and their motion on the perimeter just wasn't good enough. That ended up costing them. Los Angeles making a switch here. Williams has checked in. Jabari Parker's checked in for Sacramento. Dishes at the heel. Bangley with a wide open look. And again, unable to change momentum here. Coach is liking what he's seeing from his offense. And guys, they put the defense on the defensive. And right now, they're just focused on putting together good possessions. Yeah, that's exactly how they got the lead. They ended up having multiple possessions in a row with good quality shots, knocked them down, and the game is fully in their control. Now, here's Joseph. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. Upside Bagley, fires for three. It's hauled in by Zubats. Well, if he's going to keep shooting, they've got to run some plays for him. Screens, pick and rolls, anything they can do to get him started. On the wing, George. That's good, and it's Leonard with the assist. And now it's a nine-point Clipper lead. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. Sacramento's gone two of five from three-point land here in the first quarter. Joseph with the ball. Leonard picks him up. Healed against George. Out to Parker. First shot, first basket. He's out of the blocks fast. Parker liking to pull the trigger from that spot. That one got off pretty quick. Joseph against Williams. Pass to Zubats. The pass to Leonard over Barnes, and it's Leonard missing. And right from the start, Kevin, they've been pounding the glass. Most of those 50-50 balls also going their way. Outside, Bagley. The three from Joseph. Score the basket. Nice shot after missing his first attempt. And Bagley with a nice job of surveying there. Joseph against Williams. To the middle. Here's Leonard. Lays it up and banks it in. Leonard's got 12. And not hard to see why they are giving up points on this run. Just too many good looks from in close. And Sacramento has possession. Six point game. Joseph against Williams. Shot by Joseph. No good. And it's the Clippers ball. They're on an 18 to 7 run. He lobs it up, and the dunk by Zubas. Such an effective combo guard. We all know that Lou Williams can score, but once he gets going, he'll set a teammate up too. The Kings trail by eight. Joseph looking around. Here's Bagley. Goes back up, and the layup is up and in. 
Bagley's got his second bucket. Really nice job to convert the putback opportunity there. I mean, he stayed with that play from start to finish. That's something we say about him a lot. And the Clippers decide to take their first time out here. Greg, I'm just so impressed with the level of finesse and craftiness that Lou Williams always plays with. And, Kevin, you don't stay a perennial six-man-of-the-year candidate at Williams' age without having more than a few tricks up your sleeve. He, he's so good in tight spaces and can find a way to get a shot up where others just have to kick it out. Here's what the Clippers are going with right now. Jamichael Green, he's checked in for Zubox. Morris comes in for Harrell. Landry Shamit's checked in for Kawhi Leonard. And Reggie Jackson subbed in for Paul George. Well, putting the wingspan to great use, Lynn throws that one away. To the wing right side. Shoots from the baseline. The shot that time, not on target. And it's the Clippers taking it the other way. They traveled to Sacramento last time they faced the Kings and came away with the win. Not a close contest either the last time they got together. Everyone in the rotation played solid in the bench was the difference. Well, the second unit came in last game and just played lights out basketball. I'm sure they'd like to do that again. Morris, no good. They hold the early advantage on the glass. It's Bialica and foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. Well, for Bialica, he's not the most athletic player on the floor, but Brent, he produces. Yeah, Bialica, one of those guys who can flow into a transition and stop three or four feet behind the three-point line and drill you from there. So a nice guy as a secondary option on the break is Bialica. free throw no good you often hear about players talk about uh, their favorite spot to fire from on the floor how much of an effect does that really have a favorite shooting spot most of the time Kevin what you're talking about is star guys because they're the ones who ultimately in any given possession the coach is trying to find that guy in that spot to do something what happens throughout the course of a year is when that player has the ball there everybody else knows what to do right. like the player knows what he's going to do right Kevin because he's the star player but everybody around gets comfortable with the options and where it is that he goes if he goes right if I slide right I'm going to get the three if he goes left he's spinning back I might move towards the top of the key so the familiarity of not just the player but the players around the player that's where you can make it make it happen that's interesting Morris with the block and a rare block shot for Morris. Anticipates the move and just times it out perfectly. Los Angeles leading by five. Williams finds Jackson. Back to Williams. From the stripe. Oh, and that one had the right spin on it, and it is good. Well, the in-between game is really nice from Lou Williams. Great at working his way into a, a place on the floor where he can attack you with the shot. Now, here's Bogdanovich. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. There's 42 seconds left here in the opening quarter. Six to shoot. Sacramento again missing. Well, that's not a shot he's ever going to pass up, and he shouldn't. Despite the miss, no defender anywhere near him. He's got to shoot that one. Williams can't hit. And so it's Parker with it. He'll bring it up for Sacramento. They trail by seven. Passes to Bialica. Twelve seconds left in the first quarter of the game. Now Bogdanovich from deep three-point range. The shot, no good. And so it's Los Angeles bringing the quarter to a close with a seven-point lead. They have made it very tough to get a shot off against them. Their defense has been stifling. And we'll be back with you shortly.
Paul George had that nasty broken leg back in 2014. He describes what inspired him to come back even stronger. My inspiration really came from my mother. You know, her dealing with stroke, her dealing with really being down and out. You know, I saw her fight back. That was enough for me in my darkest days. Uh, I knew it was nothing to what my mom went through, and she came out perfectly fine, so. Well, what a story. George worked hard to get back and has not disappointed in his return. You know, recovering from a devastating injury is never easy, but George's perspective and commitment helped him to overcome it. And for those of you just tuning in, the second quarter of action is where we're at right now. And taking a look at Los Angeles' performance here, what have they been doing or not doing? Stingy on the defensive end in that first quarter. They were just getting up into people. Just a, a great job, really, of making the game ugly, trying to muck it up a little bit out there. And now brought to you by Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset our lineups. Setting the floor for the Clippers, we've got Marcus Morris. Lou Williams out there with Jackson. Then it's Jermichael Green, and it's Shamit in at the three spot. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, we know about Lou Williams' story. The three-time sixth man of the year may be undersized, but he keeps finding angles to score. Williams said, I can't shoot straight up. I've always played crooked. It's weird, but it's something I've developed, fading away from guys. I have bigger defenders on me, and it's just about creating space. Kevin, even well into his 30s, Lou Will still does it as well as anybody. I would totally agree, David. He is always deadly. Thank you. And as long as Reggie Jackson is healthy, he's going to give you some punch as a lead guard. Solid scoring option and a guy who's also unselfish in terms of getting his teammates involved. against Williams Fox dishes the land kicks it to Parker the players you see here contribute as much on D as they do at the other end of the court a list of the steel leaders among point guards fourth De'Aaron Fox and with these guys they are always going to give you an equally outstanding effort at both ends of the floor I mean it takes very aggressive defense to put up steel numbers like that. Well, proactive style of defense is one thing, but using your smarts is another. They've got great anticipation of where that ball is going on any given play. They've read the scouting report. And that one falls for Parker. There's not a lot of question about Jabari Parker's talent, a versatile forward with a tremendous drive. So he gets them both. You know, so many great dribblers, ball handlers in this league right now. Who's the best at shooting off the bounce? Well, three prime candidates to do that, Kevin, exist uh, at the point guard position. And I put James Harden in the point guard category with how much he has the ball. Harden, Kyrie, Steph Curry, three great, great names that are able to find their way to, to get the ball into the shooting pocket. No matter where they move, off the dribble, finding consistency. It's a, it's a really sought after attribute in, in the players who are coming up now because of how impactful these guys have been. And here is Fox after Lou Williams was able to get the three to go. Shot clock at five. It's stolen by Green. Two free throws coming up and they call the shooting foul. It's on Jabari Parker. The Clippers shooting their sixth and seventh free throw attempts tonight. You've got to appreciate their ability to make free throws. 81% as a team. First free throw is good. No wasted trips at all. They're taking care of business at the line. Mm -hmm. 
And so he hits both. Just over a minute gone here in the second quarter. Fox with it. The Clippers grab the miss. Green's got four rebounds now tonight. There's Shamit. Knocks down the three ball. Shamit's got five points in the quarter. Yeah, this looks like a pregame shoot around with all the threes they're allowing. Bogdanovich passes to Fox. And there's a whistle. That goes on Landry Shamit. That's foul number two for him. This is one where the second foul is probably going to cost you some minutes in this game. Patrick Beverly, he's checked in for Williams. Los Angeles on D. Only given up two points this quarter. Can they get it? And it's laid in by Parker. Parker's got six points. That's a beauty from Parker there, making hard shots look incredibly easy. Beverly looking around. Shamit on the wing. Morris finds Jackson. Six on the shot clock. Here's Green. And good work on the boards. They pick up the second chance points. Green's got his first two points of the night. The Kings trail by 15. Second quarter of play with almost three minutes gone. Fox against Beverly. Fox dishes to Parker. It's Bogdanovich on the wing. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Playing in between right now and changing speeds. Bogdanovich spotting some nice scoring opportunities. Jackson against Bogdanovich. Now, here's Shamit. He's got five. Morris passes to Green. Here's the three. And another three for the Clippers. And this is in Morris's wheelhouse right here. Extremely fluid with the catch and release. Outside, Bogdanovich. Beverly against Fox. That one good for two. Fox has got his second basket of the night. Now, what a great option he gives them on every possession. And here's Beverly. Looking at his point production, he averages almost eight points a game. And this is what the schedule looks like for the Los Angeles Clippers. On Saturday, the Minnesota Timberwolves will come into town. And then on Monday, they'll be matching up against DeMar DeRozan and the San Antonio Spurs. And this is a perfect situation for them coming up. They'll be facing a lot of teams that they should beat, and those games will be at home. Can't ask for a better stretch of the schedule. Fox, no good. And the pressure he put on that shot forced the miscue. Those are all the little things about effort there. He just gets out there and contests, and that's just enough. And you see Morris uh, aware of his surroundings, getting a good jump down court. Here's Bogdanovich. He gives his team some nice contributions, averaging a bit over 10 points a game. Fox passes to Len. And he gets the basket. Officials blowing the whistle, so a chance at the line for one more. Yeah, but even if you hit a guy with the size of Alex Lynn, he's going to power through it most of the time. And he's got his first chance at the line here. Numbers this year at the line below 70, so when he's getting to the line, not nearly as effective as he'd like. Here's what the Clippers are going with right now. Zubats is checked in for Green. Harrell comes in for Marcus Morris. Kawhi Leonard's checked in for Landry Shamit. And it's George in for Reggie Jackson. That free throw good from Len. Well, and seven foot one, the Ukrainian big Alex Len is so solid 
still a lot of time to reach his potential and hopefully he finds a way to do that. Beverly finds Harrell. Back to Beverly. It's up a three. And again, Los Angeles with the triple. And they're getting their points now almost exclusively from the triple. Four of their last five mates are from beyond the arc. Here's Fox. Pass to Len. He dishes it to heel. Over George. And finished off by Bagley. You know, Bagley can really get up and extend. And so here are the Clippers. Now Beverly. Five points in the game. Pass to Leonard. And there's the pass to Harrell. Shot clock at six. Here's Beverly. The shot, no good. Good work defensively by Fox. Here's Barnes. And it's sent back by Leonard. Uh, let this be a reminder. When you're going up for a shot, it's always important to know where Kawhi Leonard may be lurking. Now, here is George. He's someone who's a factor on any given night, averaging more than 22 points a game. Well, he's got that height advantage, and out on the perimeter, a smaller defender is just not going to contest. And it's the Kings with the ball. 17-point game. Fox against Beverly. Fox kicks to heel. Tipped away. Healed against George. Outside Leonard. Over Barnes. Harold trying to free himself up. And a little luck that time, but it drops. Yeah, and they're starting to warm up from the field this quarter. Well, for so much of what Paul George brings to the table, you have to start with his defensive impact. He is one of the top defenders in the league at his position, if not the best. Some changes for Sacramento. Giles checked in for Alex Land. And Corey Joseph subbed in for De'Aaron Fox. Clippers leading by 19. George with the ball. He has seven. Passes it to Beverly. And going out of bounds. Last touch by Barnes. You look at George with all he does, Greg, you sometimes forget how good his perimeter defense is. Well, I mean, his teammates and coaches won't ever forget about the impact he has on that end. Even when George isn't scoring or the shot isn't falling, he is still a monster on the floor just with his defense alone. And with the success they've had rebounding the basketball, they're right where you'd expect them to be firmly in the driver's seat. And the turnover again by Sacramento. And a chance here to take a look at the numbers for Beverly. He's putting up about eight points a game, six assists, and three rebounds. And he's done his share of the work for the team, definitely making an impact. Well, the numbers, if you look at them, impressive all the way around, and he's not letting the team down. Now, here is George. A 21-point lead, the biggest in the game. Now, here's Harold. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Five on the clock. And it's Beverly missing. For Sacramento, they've gone five of eight from the floor here in the second quarter. Over 60% shooting. And the pressure he put on that shot forced the miscue. Those are all the little things about effort there. He just gets out there and contests. And that's just enough. Oh my goodness. Say, save that one. I, I want to see that again. Me too. Just absolutely beautiful. And here is Joseph. Poke loose, and that's out of bounds. Sacramento will retain possession. And taking a broader look here at the year-over-year -year scoring trend for Barnes. And looking at his offensive numbers from the past few years, it seems like teams around the league 
have kind of figured him out. Uh, he's having to work a lot harder for his points, and they haven't been coming nearly as easily as they used to. Joseph finds heel. And he sinks that one, hitting the back of the rim on the way in. Heald's got his third bucket of the night. And here's George. He'll bring it up for the Los Angeles Clippers. To the paint. Here's Leonard and Kawhi Leonard with the slam. Now, what a game by Leonard, but you wouldn't know it by the way he's reacting out there. Just stone faced, but getting the job done. For Sacramento, they've gone 6 of 10 from the floor here in the second quarter. Joseph against George. Joseph, the pass to Giles. In the corner, it's healed over Beverly. Healed, can't hit. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that. And finished off by Leonard. A really good decision there from Paul George. Quick to find the open man. This King squad is struggling. Nobody near Barnes. No good from outside. Hate to say it, but if they're still trailing at the final buzzer, a lot of this is going to be felt by him. His shooting tonight has just been atrocious. And Brent, as you know, there aren't many players that can set a tone for a team, but Patrick Beverly is one of them. Well, Patrick Beverly always embraces that role about setting the tone defensively on an opposing team's point guard, making sure that tonight, if you're going to beat the team that Pat Beverly plays on, you're going to have to go through them. First free throw is good. And Beverly just motivated every night to get out here, to play, to compete. He hustles and wants to make it really tough on anybody that's on the opposing side of things. Lou Williams has checked in for the Clippers. And so he makes both from the line. Here's Joseph. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. Over in the corner, Williams. Pass to Zubats. Leonard on the wing. It falls for basket number nine from the field. He's taken 14 shots to get there. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. So it's Sacramento now. Outside, Joseph. To halt the run. It's held in by Zubats. Zubats has got rebound number 12 here already in the game. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. Offensively, defensively, they are in total control. Yeah, the other team a bit concerned here. They're trailing, and the lead seems to be growing. Here's Joseph. Paul George making his last shot. Outside, Bagley. Here's Barnes. It drops for his second made shot of this game. An unimpressive 2-7, of seven, though. Now, Barnes can be hard to contain sometimes around the rim. He can create just enough space to be effective. And Beverly kicks to Zubats. Pass to Williams. Lock at six. Here's Leonard. Los Angeles needs to get off a shot here, and it's George missing. The Kings have gone 7 of 14 in the second quarter, shooting to the tune of 50%. And here's Joseph for three. It's hauled in by the Clippers. Zubats has got 13 rebounds in the game. Class eating. And George with the stuff. Paul George can be dangerous out in transition. Great job finishing there. 46 seconds left now here in the second. The pass to Barnes. Oh. 
on the wing heel. There's the three. Rebound by the Clippers. Yeah, and that one way back in the first quarter is the three-pointer that has been his only one of the night. Jamichael Green, he's checked in for the Clippers. Jackson comes in for Patrick Beverly. Sacramento also making some changes. Jabari Parker's checked in for Bagley. Bialica comes in for Barnes. And it's Bogdanovich in for Heal. Hey, yo, you don't move. You don't move. Joseph against Williams. Pass to Jackson. And the ball out of play. The Kings will inbound. Now Parker to the wing on the left. The three from Joseph sinks the triple. Joseph's got six. That's a good read by Jabari, a solid passer, and he knew he could reward a teammate that time. Kawhi Leonard has been on display for the L.A. Clippers. His production has been flowing as he's tallied 20 points and looks to be planning for more. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Kawhi, you have grown so much offensively throughout your career. What's the focus of that end of the floor? Uh, you know, just knocking out open shots, uh, my ball handling and making good decisions, off the pick and roll, and just try to limit my turnovers. And you've done well so far, Kawhi. Thanks. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks so much, Dave, for the great interview. Don't go away, folks. We'll be back for the second half of basketball right after this. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello again, folks. Ernie Johnson here with Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. It's the NBA on 2K Sports, and let's talk the first half. The story early on was Kawhi Leonard, who was on fire. He had 20 points, three rebounds, and one block. And taking a look at the Clippers, Kenny, what did you see out there? They have run their offense straight out of a coach's textbook tonight. Both ball and player movement have been excellent. And the result of all that movement, almost all high quality shots they're generating. It's pretty to watch. Very good fundamental basketball. Shaq, what's your take on Sacramento? Well, uh, one reason they're getting roasted, AKA blown out, poor rebounding. Way too many one and done possessions. I don't want to see guys drip between their legs and shoot. Not enough fundamentals. Hey, box out 101. Maintain position 101. Learn how to play basketball 101. Things like that, Ernie. Thanks for joining us, folks. We're now just a few minutes away from the start of the third quarter. And with a big gap on the scoreboard, the second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. Kawhi Leonard really has his fingerprints all over this one. Yeah, it's been a great performance from him, really staying focused on quality shots. Yeah, this is showing that they're not going to play at anybody else's pace but their own. And as we dive into the second half, we'll find out if the next two quarters are any different from the first two. So far, it has been a runaway. On the court right now for the Kings, Barnes and Bagley, the duo with the forward. Fox at the point with heel to his side. They're the backcourt. And it's Giles in at the five. Just five on the clock. He kicks it to Barnes. Poked away. And here comes Leonard, leading the fast break. Whistle blows, bucket is good, and he'll have a chance at the line to make it a three-point play. That's the power and strength he brings. Kawhi able to absorb the contact. I'm not even sure he felt it and still knocks it down. This will be his third free throw shot of the game.
Well, the wingspan and the timing that Kawhi Leonard has is really remarkable. He utilizes those strengths to dominate both ends of an NBA floor. Now, here's Fox. Rebound by Harrell. Harrell's got four rebounds now tonight. Beverly against Fox. The feed now to George. And George with the stuff. Sweet finish from Paul George there. I like to see him get up to the rim like that. Here in this third quarter, just over a minute play. Fox with it. From the baseline. Rebound by Harrell. He lacks defense there. He's going to see fewer and fewer chances if he can't bury those kind of jumpers. Fox against Beverly. Right side George. Over Bagley. And there's Paul George on the assist by Beverly. Beverly's got his sixth assist on the night. And so Fox will bring it up for the Sacramento Kings. A teardrop falls in. Fox has got six points. When the game starts to slow down for younger players, you know they're starting to feel confident about how they go about their business. Fox with a good decision there. Now, here is George. 15 points in the game. Fox with a steal. And up the court come the Kings on the break. Healed, can't hit. How about the timing he shows there to challenge that shot yeah not easy to do there and that's a guy that you can tell takes every possession defensively very seriously now here is George after the miss from Buddy Heal Leonard with the bucket Leonard's got 25 points the strength in that body that Kawhi has he finishes through contact as well as anyone in the league a touch over two and a half minutes of basketball played here in the third quarter looking it over puts it up from 15 that one wide left and a big lead for them on both the scoreboard and the backboard thus far Leonard finds Harrell down low here's Beverly and foul on the shot he'll shoot two at the free throw line yeah Patrick Beverly is going to come at you every night just an inspiring player that way and daring the defense to get physical with him on that play. The Clippers haven't made a mistake at the line yet. 10 of 10. And the first one drops. And he makes the first, but misses the second. The seventh overall pick in 2012 out of North Carolina. Harrison Barnes won a title in Golden State. Signs the big contract with Dallas, but yet to achieve the stardom that many predicted back in high school. Landry Shamitz checked in for the Clippers. The Kings have gone only one of five from the field since halftime. A very slow start offensively. Here's Bagley. Good and a nice assist from Fox. Fox has got four assists in the game. Greg, you look at Harrison Barnes. Uh, what's his best role? I mean, Kevin, he's a hard worker, able to hit the spot up three. Defensively, his strength gives him some versatility. Just a solid contributor. And very close to making the shot, but instead he'll go to the line for two on the shooting foul. The compliment that Harrell gets often is the fact that he's just so tireless a worker, and that energy is something that both coaching staffs and teammates appreciate. This is his first trip to the line tonight. And 
and he knocks down the first one. And wow, you just have to love the motor on Montrez Harrell when he's on the floor. Great on the glass, and he just plays with such a, a fire. Alex Lenz checked in for Harry Giles. And both free throws, good for Harrell. And with Harrell, you can see how his energy spreads to the rest of the team. Reminds me a bit of what Fareed used to bring the teams. Harrell is also undersized, but boy, he makes up for it in so many ways. Well, if you don't take care of the ball, fellas, that's what can happen. Absolutely, Greg. That makes the turnover even more painful. And the gamble paying off. So it's Sacramento now after the basket by Los Angeles. A pass to Fox. And the rejection by Zubats. He's been off the mark, and that hasn't helped them chip away at the lead. It's been a theme here this quarter. And stolen by Barnes. Here's Fox. Drills it from outside. Fox has got five points now in the quarter. Well, Fox trying to work on that outside jump shot, become more consistent. Nice bucket there. Now, here's Shamit, covered by Heel. Zubats, bounce pass. Here's George, drilled from 11 feet out. George has got 17 now. He has created some terrific opportunities for himself and really made the most of it. Healed against George. Healed kicks to Barnes. Shoots over Leonard. Here's Len. That one goes in. Five points in the game. This guy's got a great nose for the offensive glass, and I like how he used those long arms that time to reach up, snag that rebound. Now, here's Shannon. He has seven. He gets it in there. Yeah, three consecutive field goals have come right at the rim. The D had better start Buckley now. Kings have gone a somewhat subpar 4 of 10 on their shots in the second half so far. To the middle. And finished off by Bagley. Just getting more and more court awareness and where guys are at all times is De'Aaron Fox. Shamit on the wing. That falls. Nice speed that time from George. George has got his sixth assist on the night. And it's the Kings with the ball. Fox passes to Len. The dish to Barnes. No good on the shot. Great D that time from Leonard. The shot by George, wide open. And finished off by Leonard. Yeah, the claw using those broad shoulders and those hands, snatching that one down, and wasting no time going back up. And here's Fox. He'll bring it up for Sacramento. Kicks to heel. Kings moving the ball around. Shoots. The shot comes out, and the Clippers will go the other way with it. And after this one, they're home against Minnesota. That'll be the second of four games at home for them. Shamit up top, covered by Barnes. From 10 feet out, and it's off the back rim. No good. Stolen by Zubats. Hits the layup after the sweet pump fake to freeze the D. Zubats has got nine. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Now here's Heald. Seven points in the game. And here is Fox. Sacramento again missing. And, and not a night he's going to want to remember. Just not really able to score the basketball. 
Just the level of power and explosiveness. Leonard just tenacious at the rim. Here's Fox. He's got nine. Pass to Barnes. Back to Fox. Shot clock at six. The putback. Great positioning on the putback. Unblockable shot unless they get a bigger man on him. And I'm looking at the roster sheet, Kevin. I don't see anybody bigger. Here's Shamit. He's got 11. The 11-footer. Bagley with the rebound. Bagley's got seven rebounds in the game. Healed the pass to Fox. It's hauled in by Zubats. Zubats has got rebound number 19 now. Incredible board work. And it's George missing. The Kings shooting around 36%. They're just not able to finish consistently. Heel dishes to Barnes. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. Zubats has got his 20th rebound here tonight. Saw that coming. Here's Harrell. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. Harrison Barnes picks one up. Well, just hard to keep up with Montrez Harrell and that impressive energy he brings. Think about Montrez Harrell and the type of energy and effort that he brought last year to this team to help solidify, I guess, most of the culture piece of what Steve Ballmer wants this franchise to be about. That's playing hard, playing with energy, and having some enthusiasm for the competition. Montrez Harrell wraps all those things up pretty nicely in the way he plays. That's good from Harrell. And Montrez Harrell, Brent, beloved in the locker room. Well, he's beloved because every night when you go out on the floor with him, you know what you're going to get. A guy who is incredibly competitive, passionate, knows his role, and plays with a physical presence that he doesn't shy away from anybody that's on the floor. That's infectious. No good on the second free throw. Brent, when constructing a team, it's always tricky to, to fit in max contracts. But the truth is, some players probably deserve much more money than they're allowed to receive. Incredible to say that, right, it Kevin? Is, yeah. but, but there are guys like LeBron James, whose $35 worth, million right. dollar contract might be worth 100 I always thought about, about, about Jordan, too, right? I mean, my goodness. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And for the, the years that Michael Jordan was <laughs> underpaid in Chicago yes. for what it was he was doing. Uh, but in terms of competitive balance for the league and 30 franchises and for you to try to, to build a team and a roster to put out on the floor to, to play this game and have opportunities to win championships, uh, it's, it's really the only way and sometimes unfairly for guys in terms of their competition and compensation uh, to, to have to put uh, maximums on what it is that players can earn. And once again, off the mark by Sacramento. Jackson against Bogdanovich. And you want more of this from Jackson. The more unselfish he is, the better the team. There's 154 left to play in the third. Joseph against Williams. The offensive rebound. And Joseph kicks to Parker. Second chance shot. And the jumper is good. Parker's got eight. And Parker has the mid-range shot going there, looking composed while he pulls the trigger. Love the in-between game. Los Angeles has gone 5 of 10 from downtown tonight. 50% exactly. There's the pass to Green over Parker. And it's Green missing. And the pressure he put on that shot forced the miscue. Those are all the little things about effort there. He just gets out there and contests, and that's just enough. Len, good. They're making this a runaway. And the only question for me right now is just how big the lead will eventually become. Four on three as they bring it up. It's Parker outside. 
It's hauled in by the Clippers. Williams looking over the floor. Outside for Jackson. Fires the three. Rebound by the Kings. Land's got four rebounds in this game. So it's both teams making substitutions here. Sacramento's gone into the three-point range four times since halftime and buried two of them. Passes it to Bialica. Here's Giles. He kicks it to Parker. Six on the shot clock. Outside, Joseph. Again, the miss by the Kings. Well, they shouldn't be giving that shot to anyone, but they certainly shouldn't be giving it to him. That's a big break for the defense. Yeah, undersized guys with athleticism do these kind of things, playing above the rim. Love to see him get up like that. Kawhi Leonard has been on display for Los Angeles. He has been a determined scorer today. 29 points all together for him. And I think there's more where that came from. And don't go away. We'll be right back. And while we can, now let's take a look at today's State Farm assist of the game. And the definition of teamwork right there, guys. I mean, what great communication between them, and what a beautiful feed. Coaches talk about it all the time, but to be able to play with that kind of feel, nice play collaborating, improvising, and organic. And as we head into the fourth, we'll see if there's a comeback in the works or if it's more of the same from the first three quarters. We've got Reggie Jackson. Green is out there with Marcus Morris. It's Kevin Gellian at the five spot. So that's the lineup on the floor for the Clippers. The King shooting about 35% from the floor. Not much falling for them. Bogdanovich, no luck. Los Angeles has gotten a lot of looks from outside tonight. Five of 12. Lobbed up there for Green, up high to stop the alley-oop. Oh, such a beautiful pass to set that one up. Yeah, the pass might have been pretty, but the finish was angry. <laughs> Outside, Joseph. Here's Farrell. Kicks it out to Bogdanovich. Krills the three-pointer. Their third three-pointer in a row. The Clippers shooting about 59% from the floor offensively. They've been running without a hitch. Right side Jackson. Here's Magruder. Joseph with the rebound. We'll have a hard time shaking that one off. Perfect position. Plenty of space. Just clanked it. Great open look there. Farrell's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. 12 straight points off of three-pointers, and the D looks shell-shocked. Jackson passes to Green. Something Commissioner Silver has mentioned, Brent, the possibility of a mid-season tournament. Ever see that happening? It would be interesting to see if, if that idea grows some legs here, Kevin, and adopting what it is that in, in soccer leagues in Europe ha have done for many years because uh, teams hone in on what those individual cups mean and the competition raises and you earn something for the end of the year. Uh, if Commissioner Silver can find a way to get that done, it, it becomes very intriguing instead of an all-star weekend to have teams gather for a mid-season tournament with something on the line. Well, Elevated competition. Well, kids play that at high school. They play that in the college level. It would make sense that it could fit in the NBA as well. It'd be interesting, and especially yeah. halfway through the year, to reinvigorate your fan mm -hmm. base with something like that, I think would be great. Good point. McGruder passes to Morris, and the layup is good after a nice lead pass. An efficient score inside. Morris can beat you with a variety of moves. Morris against Bazemore. And the layup falls. Bazemore's got his first points of the night. And say what you will about the value of the three-pointer, but those close-in looks are always plan A. Every trip down, get to the paint, get deep, score. Now 
Joe Jackson. Pass to Kevin Kelly. Inside. Here's Morris. Rebound by the Kings. Puts it up. A quick shot there, and it's off target. The Clippers have gone just 33% from the field in the fourth quarter so far. They are two of six. Jackson finds Green, takes the alley-oop pass, and dunks it down. So it's Sacramento. So far in the fourth quarter, they've allowed just six points. Here's Farrell, guarded by Green. Farrell passes to Bazemore. And there are the Kings with another bucket. Wow, something's brewing, guys. The three-pointers just continue to flow. Pass to Magruder. We've played just over three and a half minutes now in the fourth quarter. The shot missing. And the Kings going the other way now. Here's Farrell. And it's Kevin Gelly with the rebound. Kevin Gelly's got four rebounds now tonight. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. And Bird writes an important element in structuring the salary cap. Can you tell the viewers exactly what that means? What it means, Kevin, is you have the ability to go into the ta above the tax to sign your own player, and so it doesn't cost you in terms of tax dollars. So if player finishes his season, you have bird rights on that player. You can negotiate a number that's not going to impact your bottom line and cut into your salary cap. So very important when teams are maneuvering around and trying to get players on their roster for a season or two, that after that second season or third season over, that the bird rights still remain for them to extend him even further to keep him around the culture. Joakim Noah, he's checked in for Los Angeles. Andre Shamit comes in for Jackson. And Morris drops them both. And a guy who's bounced around the league a little. Surprising given that Morris is a solid shooter and a pretty good defender and rebounder. Here's Farrell. He's covered by Shamit. Now the pass to Joseph. And there's the foul. It's on Rodney Magruder. That's foul number two for him. Now, here's Holmes. He's guarded closely. Here's Bazemore. And when Morris is playing with intensity like this, his defense can really shine through. And it goes out of bounds. That went off Joseph. Morris passes to Noah. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. You know, Brent, how candid can players be in their answers in the post-game interviews about what has happened or what they're feeling at that time? In other words, is there a danger to being, uh, being too honest as a player? There could be, Kevin. I mean, anytime you express some of your vulnerabilities, and, and if it's done at the right time, somebody's going to take advantage of it. What we've seen over the past couple years is Forget about when it is that the, the media is asking you questions. Most players are, are taking it to their social media accounts where mm. they're able to get the message out without being baited by somebody with regards to a question. They can expound on whatever it is that they are feeling at that time, and that helps them to, to control the messaging a little bit more. And I think that trend is, is going to continue and continue to grow. Magruder, it's deflected. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time without a bucket. Here's Farrell. Another shot, and it's good on the way up. Farrell's got five points in the quarter. 
And they've shown a little extra hustle on the offensive glass here in the second half. Second chance points are starting to add up for them, and they can use every one of them. To the inside, and that one's good by Noah. Well, do I have to say Noah's arc is looking good? And here's Farrell. He'll bring it up for the Sacramento Kings. Passes it to Bazemore. Of course, uh, Dirk Nowitzki spent his whole career with the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, we don't see that much anymore, do we? From the beginning to the end with one team. No, but I think we're going to still uh, occasionally have anomalies like we did with, with Reggie being in Indiana uh, for the years of his playing career. Nate McMillan was in Seattle for his playing career, now coach of the Indiana Pacers. So there will be times where we'll have that once or twice. It's not going to happen very much, Kevin. Not, not in today's, not in today's game. And not with what's at stake. And the one thing about Moore, he doesn't scare you from beyond the yard, but you still have to account for him. Sacramento's gotten off four three-pointers in the final quarter, and two of them have fallen. Here's Farrell. He's covered by Shamit. Baysmore. No one around him. And they come right back with their own three-pointer. Now that basket must be widening out right now, Kevin. He's making almost every shot he's putting up this quarter. Noah with it. Down low. Here's Magruder. Good and a nice assist from Noah. Magruder's got his first basket of the night. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket coming off a pretty pass. The Kings have gone only 6 of 14 from the field in the fourth. Here's Farrell. Pass to Bazemore. Over Morris. Bazemore gets the bucket. Bazemore's got nine points now in just the second half. You know, if you're only looking at the way he's played offensively, you think his team would have the lead. Now, here's Shamit. He's covered by Joseph. Pass to Cabin Gelly. From the arc. And it's Magruder missing. And thus far, they've managed to overcome an off game from him offensively. Here's Farrell. The pass to Holmes. The second chance effort. Can't hit from in close. Los Angeles has gone one of three from outside the arc since we've reached the fourth quarter. Here's Shamit. Bank shot. No good. That might not be the shot they want him taking, even with the D backing off. Baysmore inside the three-point line. Had the space there, but it's offline. Los Angeles has gone 6 of 14 with the three ball tonight. Just a little over 40%. Now here's Noah. Six to shoot. Here's Kevin Gelly. And he gets it to go from the corner. Kevin Gelly. Five from beyond the arc since the final quarter's gotten underway. Passes it to Bazemore. Shoots from 14. Makes the bucket. Now he's got five field goals. Five for eight in the game. This is not a player who likes to be trailing in any game. That lights a fire. And here is Shamit. Brent, we have seen some international showcase games the last few years. Do you like that trend? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I like the fact that our league, we, we know how global it is with uh, how many players from different countries are represented throughout uh, the rosters around the league. But for our game to travel around to London and to Mexico City and, and have an opportunity for those fans to see what NBA basketball is like, uh, I think it's an absolute win for I'd the I'd like NBA, to see more, actually. Well, more time for those teams. They, yes. The timing of some of those trips for some teams <laughs> are, are a little bit tough in terms shit. of the travel, but their appearances there mean so much more to grow the game globally. <laughs> 
and he makes the first. Bazemore is an athletic player who continues to try to evolve his game. And he gets out in the transition. And that's when you're going to get Bazemore at his best. And the Kings making a change here. Lens checked in. And so Bazemore nails both of them. Now Shamit. Over Joseph. Tries again. It's rebounded by Farrell. They've been able to have some team success in this game despite what's been an awful shooting night for him. Noah with the block. That's something Noah is phenomenal at doing, leaving the floor quickly enough to get the block. Bazemore grabs the miss. The Kings shooting 40% in the fourth. And the contract structure for NBA first-rounders, two years guaranteed, two years of team options, qualifying offer. Brent, should we consider changing that up? I think it's working pretty mm -hmm. well, Kevin. I think every front office is out there trying to find players out there that are giving you value beyond your contract and that happens a lot when you're a team that has a first round pick one through ten one through twenty and you hit on a draft choice you potentially could get three years and sometimes four when you have incredible players coming into the league as their first year changing franchises around but a player that's providing way more value than the contract that they're getting at that time. So I don't see that changing much. It gives teams a long enough time to evaluate the talent coming in. Seems to be working. It, it does. And, and the players that prove it are looking at, at the calendar saying, could I fast forward three <laughs> years? Because I really <laughs> like to cash in on what I'm doing for you. Pass to Morris. And stolen by Bazemore. Yes, and, and with this one winding down, it's obvious to everyone who watched it. Just a total mismatch and a true show of strength for the Clippers. You don't see this kind of a blowout often, but tonight this is a quality win across the board to deliver out uh, this kind of punishment. They definitely never changed the approach. They just kept after it and showed they were clearly the better team in just about every single category. And so checking out the record for these guys tonight will mark win number 37 for them on the year. And as we get set to put this one to bed, a one-sided season series thus far, they've won two straight. And what a tremendous standout performance it was for Leonard. It was the kind of game for him that all scorers dream of, where the basket seemed as wide as a barrel. Here's Magruder. That shot off the mark. Now Sacramento takes it the other way. Here's Farrell, and it's Kevin Gelly with the rebound. Now the Clippers with it. Morris passes to Magruder. Holmes with the steal. Two-second difference between shot clock and game clock. Bazemore, and it's Shamit with the rebound. So it's Los Angeles winning this one easily. This game may not have been the most exciting we've ever seen, but you have to appreciate just what a clinical performance they put on. Uh, I know their fans appreciated it, and we saw at times just stretches of excellent defense. Potency from an offensive standpoint as well. They, they were pretty much dominant. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks very much, Paul. Congrats on the win. Where is your team's attitude right now? Continue to, you know, play together. And we can just stick to that, keep working, staying confident, keep defending, um, and knocking shots down. We'll be all right. Looked like it all came together tonight, Paul. Thanks very much. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David. Great job. Thanks so much. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For Greg Anthony, Brett Berry, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA, presented by 2K Sports. We'll see you next time.